All right, folks, hello again, and thanks for tuning in with us again. Another episode of Hidden Magic TV, where we interview some of the top business people in all of Tampa Bay and find out some business secrets and some other things that can help us out with what we got. We have our guest today, Arlene. Hi. With your business captured by Arlene, correct? Yes, captured okay. by Arlene. Very cool. So, Arlene, tell uh, the audience. We got a podcast audience, and we're going to have a video um, audience here. Tell the audience a little bit about yourself and how you got started. Okay, well, um, I've been about five years now um, doing the business, and you know, it's just one of those things. As um, a stay-at-home mom, I was I loved what I was doing. I loved being the mom, but my husband saw the talent, saw the gift, and he one day said, "You know, you should really start a business." Everyone keeps asking you to do their wedding, to do their baby shower, to do their bridal shower. Um, why don't we start? My answer was no, no way, I could never own a business. And um, my husband, one day I got this really big um, job and he's like, listen, it's time to start. Yeah. It's time to invest in yourself, invest in our future. And it was a scary step. Um, we did it and we did it, we jumped right in and I'm glad we did. I, I haven't looked back since. I'm, it's There's nothing like being your own business um, you know, business owner and being able to set your goals and your parameters and deciding where you're going to go and where you're not going to go. I, I love it. And I, I would never go back. <laughs> you think you could go back, like actually work for somebody? Um, I actually considered it. I was offered a job for my old um, credit union that I worked for for 10 years. I, I did. I, I actually considered it for a little while because they saw what I do. They saw my personality. They thought I could really get out there for them. Um, and I would have loved that job, but nothing's like being your own boss. Yeah. Nothing. There's yeah. nothing. I couldn't go back. There's no way. <laughs> I didn't. I there's didn't. No, there's no way I can go back. Yeah. I mean, it, you, you, I mean it's, it, it's one of those things you're either made to be a certain way or you're not. Right. And it's just, I, I couldn't do it. Right. I don't think right. I could do it. So it's interesting that you were, you said you were a stay-at-home mom for, for a while. Yes, I right? homeschooled my children and stayed home. Okay. So talk about when you... When you, how did you get your first job? Oh gosh, well, I guess it started off um, the big, the biggest job. Um, my daughter was working at a Happy Hanger Cafe, which was across the street from my house, and or is still. And my my daughter was working there, and I saw on um, on their counter um, the festival flight, and I just looked at it and I was like, huh, I wonder if they have a photographer, you know. So I, I went up to the counter, I kind of asked them, do you guys have a photographer? They said no, and that they really would <clears throat> like to have one. So I, I they're like, we are expecting a thousand people at least. Wow. And I was like, okay, well, <laughs> the very first year was 5,000 people. Really? The second year was almost 10,000 people, and the third year was just insane. People coming from Orlando. So I did it for three years for them, and I wow. loved every minute of it. So Nugget, for the business listeners, you doing just living your life, saw a potential opportunity. Mm -hmm. You took the first action. I did. Reached out, pitched. Yes. Or just or kind of investigated. Right. And they said, no, we don't have a photographer. Then you pitched. Mm -hmm. And they accepted the pitch. Yes. But none of that would have happened if you had looked at it and quieted that voice and just ignored it. Exactly. No, and that's one thing I would say for anyone that is considering it. It just keeps nagging in the back of your head. If you feel that your heart pounding and you feel that moment, there's going to be a pivotal mo moment when you decide to own your own business. And if you, quite, like you said, quiet that voice, your just look at, if you know me, look at where I'm at today and where I was almost five years ago. If I had quieted that voice, I would not be the person I am today. Honestly, yeah. I wouldn't be. Yeah. So were you like playing around, like doing little things with photography? I was. Okay. So so you were kind of, if I can use the phrase not to be uh, demeaning, but you were toying with it, maybe just kind of... It was play, a hobby. Kind of, okay, so mm -hmm. you were playing around with it. Mm -hmm. So it was a hobby that grew into... Your husband said, you now say, look, <laughs> you can make some money with this. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. And then he kind of nudged you into Oh, yeah. Literally, so, when he made that decision and um, I got that job, he goes, um, he goes, so we're, we're getting an LLC, right? We're, we're going all the way. You're not just getting a DBA. And I'm like, uh-huh. And then he got business <laughs> cards for me. I'm like, uh-huh. And now, then he's like, scared? I got a website. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, 
anything unknown is somewhat scary. Yeah. Um, especially when I've never owned a business. I've never, I've never owned anything. And, and to own that and to say that I'm in my name. My name is on my business. So to put my name out there and say, um, this is me. This is yeah. who I am. And I, I want to give you the best work I can give you. That's scary. That's scary that I don't, I'm not just doing it for your birthday gift or your baby shower gift or your wedding gift. I'm right. doing it for money. I'm saying I'm valuable enough to ask for that money from you. And that was a scary step. Really? I didn't ask for a lot of first. Yeah. I think a lot of photographers start off that way to get their portfolio. But at first, I did not value myself at all. And your pricing reflected that. Oh. Yeah. Yes, most definitely. Yeah. I still struggle with that. I mean, I, I've... Talk to other entertainers and talk to other entertainment bookers, and they're like, you know, you're, you know, you should be charging four thousand dollars a show, five thousand dollars a show, and maybe, you know, I don't know if it's just a belief that I have, but I just don't know if that much work is out there to do that. Right. I don't believe that my show isn't necessarily up to that caliber, right. but I just don't know if the market can necessarily bear that. But I look, I do look back in times and thinking, you know, wow, I was only charging like. Two hundred dollars for that, and I know, that was that was I know. what what was what was we I just thinking? talked about that last well, night, my husband and I. A year ago, my de- my prices have definitely changed from a year ago because I'm going to print now, and I, I did. I, you're flabbergasted that you would accept that or say that that is what you're worth, yeah. And then now to see where you've changed and where you've gone and what you're accepting and, and valuing now, yeah. So um, let's talk about. We had mentioned you know right before we start shooting, you said something about. Uh, the digital world taking over and people mm-hmm. are forgetting the value of actually print. Yes. Right. You know, I, I just I just heard my um, son's girlfriend, she went on this awesome trip to Maine and all her pictures were on her camera, which is great. Nothing, I'm not saying anything wrong with that, but all her, her picture, her camera, camera, I mean her phone, um, one night had to do an update or something and she lost all her pictures. Wow. And not that that has anything to do with this, but what I'm saying is, um, I guarantee you she would have never printed them. They would have stayed on her phone anyway, and she would have eventually lost them. I mean, yes, now we have Facebook that we can look back on them, but I look at your house and how beautiful it is, and I see all of these memories, these moments, your story is captured on your wall, and I love that. I don't see that enough. People, this digital world, they don't value it, and they just think it's always going to be there, but it's not. And... It's just one of those things. Just take a moment and print. Yeah. Take that moment and print. Even if it's just print off on your basic home color copier. Yes, anything. So that way you actually have something tangible to hold. Yes. And you know, it was funny because so many people have been asked, it's like, uh, what do you value the most? And some of the, when I say older generation, I say, you know, if I can use this and not get not get too many, <laughs> but like you know, fifty, mm-hmm. sixty, that generation, yes, as and older, seventy, eighty, okay, people living in their eighties. One of the questions that was always asked is, if your house was on fire, what would you grab? Mm-hmm. And one of the first things so many people say no is is the photo album. Yes, no question. And it, and it, and it, because and, that's your legacy. Right? Yeah. That's your grandfather, your grandmother, your great grandmother, your, you know, distant relative. That that's your legacy. And that's what you are allowing me when I'm taking your photographs to be part of that, to be right. part of that story, to allow to capture that to, to um where it stays for, for generation to generation to generation. Yeah. And people I'm really worried. I'm really worried to see what my my seventeen year old and my 20 year old are gonna have for their generations to come because everything's on their computer or their yeah. phone that's going to die. And, and and in that era before the tech age became what it is, you know, that was their only way of really keeping family records yes. was through photographs. Yes, right? absolutely. And you know, now that everybody's going digital and we're all digital and we're all tech and we're all online, mm-hmm. it is something to say that say, you know, could you have something, a family, if we call family heirloom, and pass it to someone? Because, you know, when you were growing up, the only way you knew about past relatives were through mm-hmm. photographs, right? Absolutely. And asking, saying, who was this and what was this? Right. And it's funny how each photograph that you hold in your hand can have a story. And, Absolutely. Yeah. And I think some of that can get lost. But yeah. it is good to say, okay, well, yeah, we this was taken here. And talk about um, when those moments are captured 
people tend to remember everything that happened in that. Oh, movie, yeah. Right? You right. can look at that and know what happened before or what happened after. Um, you can remember that outfit. You can say, hey, I wore the necklace you might be wearing. I got that, you know, for my grandmother or, you know, what, whatever the case may be. And that moment is them at that moment. And everyone waits when they're taking pictures to... Um, wait till they're skinnier or wait till they're younger, which you're not going to be, but wait, <laughs> wait till, you know, wait, wait till my grandkid is born. Let's wait till this one. Everyone waits. Right. And I, I would urge you not to wait because, um, unfortunately life is, is very precious right. and you just don't know. And I'm not saying to be, you know, oh, let's rush. But when your child or someone says, I want to go get pictures, get them. Yeah. Don't hesitate. Do you know how many times the last picture was taken at someone's wedding? I get calls from brides all the time. My aunt died. My grandmother died. My sister died. My mom died. Can I get those pictures blown up? Can I get those pictures, you know, unfortunately for maybe the memorial or whatever, you know, and I'm like, yes, absolutely, you know, here. And, and that's the last good picture of them. Mm. Now, also, let's talk about in, the, in this age, talking about this and then talking about the digital world okay i've got a very good friend of mine uh back in my home state west virginia yeah give him a shout out mike um <laughs> he did some of my earlier headshots some of those headshots i still use um he did some of my earlier headshots back in the day but one thing about mike mike was taking photographs in the 80s okay, okay. so this was pre-cell yes. this was pre-digital yes and one thing he i remember him telling me was that he because he there's like used to be a big conference that happened happens in st peter big photographers conference happens in st petersburg so he would come down we would hang out he would go over to it and hang out and he said that the question was asked in a in a room full of photographers modern photographers how many of you all have actually shot one film right and most of the... <laughs> <laughs> well, I have shot in film when I was younger, absolutely. Yeah. My children, believe it or not, both of my children still shoot on film. Really? Yes. There's only one place in Lutz that we go to that we get them developed. Whoa. They pay uh, an arm and a leg for it at Walgreens. But they the, the pictures that it captures, there's just so beautiful yeah i know they're grainy i know that they're the light leaks or you know it's just but it's beautiful yeah it's beautiful it's cool. nothing's nothing's like film you know but i personally do not do film because it's just too expensive yeah especially now in this day and age oh yeah but and, and, and like you're saying i mean there, there's one lab so right and uh i know where mike used to go you know his lab the lab he used i mean he had to start shipping because the lab yeah. closed Oh wow! So you know, because there was so there was no labs processing film right, anymore. Right. Um, what do you think with you know <laughs> his his Mike has a soapbox of of well people just go to Best Buy and they go get a four hundred dollar camera and they get a business card and they're a photographer now. Right. And and he he talks about them not thinking about proper training, understanding about lighting, mm -hmm. understanding about things like that. What do you think about those people that you know some a lot of people are doing that? They're right. just Talk about the professionalism of actually hiring a professional to take photos versus somebody saying, well, we'll just take pictures with our smartphone. Well, um, well, with a smartphone, that's different than having a good camera. So if you're talking about someone that just got a new camera that's $400, which God bless them, you know, hey, that's beautiful. I love, I love that you have this hobby and that you're enjoying it. Um, the problem with that is every aunt has a new camera or every uncle and not only do they they not have the right lighting and they mess up let's say at a wedding they mess up the shot that i could get mm. that first look that first glance that her walking down the aisle i've cannot tell you how many countless times and and it's very hard because it's normally family close family like an aunt an right. uncle um you know and they're there with either their iPad or their camera or their video camera. We've even seen um, my number one suggestion is to have an unplugged wedding. And that's where that is not allowed at the wedding because no one is going to take pictures like I can. I have the right lighting. I have the right equipment. Right. I we, ha we have two photographers on each side. I'm getting every angle. 
you're not going to get that at the seat with someone's head in front of you or whatever the case may be. And they're going to be great. Some of them are going to be great pictures, yeah. but you're going to get one great picture to the hundred that she's paying for or that he's paying for that the, the 120 or 130 that I'm trying to get for that wedding. Right. And, and that's, that's the issue. Yeah. You know? I get it. I get but, it. but again, back to that new mom that just got a camera, you know, God bless them. If they, if, there's nothing wrong with doing a hobby and starting off, but yes, it does seem like there's always someone else, you know, saying, I can do it for $25, I can do it for, but you're going to get what you pay for. You are. That's you're going to get what you pay for. And talk about, talk about, uh, we talk, you know, we were talking about what we were going to talk about before, uh, as far as people trying to talk down a business owner and trying to talk you down mm, in your pricing. That's one of the most, um, disheartening issues that I, I experienced as a business owner. Yeah. You know, if you went to Best Buy and you went to go buy that camera, you would not be able to talk down that price. It's $400 on a sticker. Um, unfortunately, people come to me on, on a regular basis. Oh, it's for exposure. I, you're going to be out there for exposure. <laughs> or, oh. or it's, it's you know, my, my mom's sick and you know, what, however to pull out the heartstrings because I do love people and I love my job and I'm definitely not about the money, but I am supporting my family right. and I am, I am away from my family many, many hours, not just, not just at a shoot, but on the hours of editing, right. it is for every hour, there's at least three hours to editing. Yeah. And, and so you see me, oh, you're charging that much for an hour? Well, yeah, I'm charging that much. But there's so much not, more going in. Oh, yeah, my equipment, yeah. everything. My yeah. light, everything has to be taken care of. My taxes, the ta I have to pay taxes on it. Oh, yeah. You know, everything. So it, it's just disheartening. They would not do that. You know, I, now maybe there are some people that would. Hey, I don't like that price. Look, bring it down. But for the most part, you wouldn't do it. Most yeah. people would not do that. But they have no problem trying to do that to a photographer or to a makeup artist or to a hairstylist. And it, it really, it really is disheartening. Yeah, yeah, and it can be very discouraging because it's often discussed that you know your price or what you are charging can reflect the value of what you feel like you're worth. Mm -hmm. And someone offering to trying to do less or wanting you to do it less, and and to the industry on all sides, you know, I've talked to other magicians and it aggravates me. That these cats are still out there performing for seventy five bucks, a hundred bucks an hour, yeah. and it's like, look, pal, <laughs> I get that you are doing something else and you just want the gig because you're not doing anything, right. but you can't. A professional can't make a living doing hundred dollar shows. Right. I mean, uh, every week. You're I mean, bringing up a great point. You can't um, do that. Yeah, everyone that does that, you're right. Every mother that does that every family friend friend that does that you are making the average go down yes. you are hurting the professional absolutely you're making a very good point i mean it's like if you go if you were to go if you have a car and you go to an auto mechanic and you go to a dealership you already know the dealership's going to charge you anywhere from 85 to hundred dollars just to look at your car mm -hmm. because that is what the dealership does right there is no and i mean everybody's unanimous on that everybody charges the same right. there is no well it might be this it might be that now you might have some mom and pop shops or you might have some other shops but if you go to an actual car dealership garage to get your car looked at they charge 85 dollars just for the initial diagnostic right period right flat and i'm trying to get other entertainers to get on board and say, look, man, you got to quit doing these two hundred dollars shows right. because if we're all charging the same, right, the market has to pay the market. Right, I agree. It's not you. Well, you're, you know, you're, we're going to pay two hundred dollars over here. I mean, it, it, it hurts. It hurts the entire. It hurts the entire industry. You being a professional and getting into doing it, you know, I, you mentioned the LLC part. We got to bring up. We're going to give Mark a plug here. Okay, we got to give Mark a plug. So you are part of a professional organization called RGA. I am, and I'm very proud of it. Okay, all right. So let's talk about RGA okay. and what, what it does. Well, first, I'll tell the audience what RGA stands for for those people that don't know what RGA stands for. Oh, me say it? Yeah. Revenue Generating Activities. Okay. 
Yes. And it's a networking group for business owners and small business owners. Yes, right. it is. Okay. It's an alternative to other networking groups that we won't say no. those initials. <laughs> right. Okay. So <laughs> you don't get your hand um, slapped when you miss a meeting. You don't have to get someone to um, substitute for you. Um, the beauty of it is is that you, we are all business owners, and there's going to be moments where our business is shining, so we're working our business and we may not be able to make it two or three meetings. Um, so that's number one. And the one thing I love about it the most is there are 30 chapters all over the area. Wow. Yeah, and not only can I visit those chapters, I can speak 10 minutes at each of those chapters. Um, it's just a wonderful time, and it's not selling my product, it's selling me. And that's yeah. what I love about RGA. Yeah, so RGA has 30 chapters. You can network and meet other business owners. Yes. You refer work, we refer work back and forth to each other. Right. Right, and that's also a good thing. And it's, it seems like it's a very positive environment. It is, but there is one that is the most dynamic, the <laughs> best one that everyone oh, should she's visit. Gonna, oh, she's yes. going to plug a chapter now. Over at Glory Day Grills at 1130 on Tuesday, 1130 <laughs> to 1. We would love to have everyone stop by. Yes. Okay. Very cool. So when you got an RGA, did you see a an, an influx of business? Did you see your business uh, referrals and things like that go up? Not at first. It took time for them to get to know me and trust me. But and that's like anything. Me. Yes. You know I mean? So it took the me. audience has got to know you. They got to trust right. you. They got to like you, and exactly. then they buy. Right. Exactly. It took about three to four months for me to be faithful, yeah. consistent to the one. Um, meeting that I was going to, and then I would visit the others. So there were some that I would come or not go, um, but there was one that I always tried to be faithful every week. Unless something was was going on, I would just always go to that one. Now I'm faithful to two, and then go to the others. I supplement the others whenever I, I can. Whenever and I it, it's a